Hi, welcome back to another video. Um, tonight I'm going to make a quinoa salad. Quinoa, 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 you know what I mean. Um, seeds, tiny little lovely seeds. I am incredibly fond of quinoa. Um, I understand it's, it's pretty good from a, um, in terms of vegetable protein point of view, um, from a nutritional point of view. And I like it because I find it very tasty, it's um, quite um, flexible, I put it sometimes in soups, but mostly I make salad. I use it as an alternative to couscous as well. Mostly I make salads with it. Uh, I make salads which I then take uh, as my packed lunch, sometimes cold salads, sometimes quite warm up. So what we're going to do today is my average one, which is uh, simply with some quinoa, some uh, fried courgettes and some olives in brine. It's vegan friendly, if you want to make it richer, I sometimes add pita and uh, uh, but it's not necessary. So the main thing I do um, is actually cook the quinoa uh, with some vegetable oil, uh, gluten free and vegan friendly and the whole thing. And that is going to give it a bit more taste, it's going to make it more tasteful. I, I cooked it this once with somebody and uh, they tried it and said, so oh, when I cook quinoa, it doesn't never quite taste like that. And I think it's because it can be quite plain if we eat it nothing. So what I do, as I said, I treat it a bit like couscous. And the two things I do, I actually use some olive oil to begin with. I sort of like fry it quickly uh, at the beginning with some olive oil. And then I, as I said, I use the oil. So let's start with a bit of olive oil. Now what I tend to do is to actually use the old uh, one to two. So it's one measure of quinoa, two measures of water. Just put the quinoa in the pan. Let's just find it there. And then I have uh, um, warmed up some water so you can boil it with some with your kettle. And I will just, um, once the quinoa is slightly going to add two quantities of uh, warm water. And I'm going to add a couple of teaspoons of uh, the bouillon powder and that basically should do the trick. And you know it's very practical. I just, I actually use it as a, as a accompaniment things as well, and you can also make slight like picnic salads. As I said, I use it instead of couscous, so I do a, a sort of taboule with quinoa um, instead of um, couscous. And um, and again, as always, it's just you have a basic something basic. Um, which is in your kind of uh, uh, canvas, and then you just play by adding and trying is adding new ingredients. I put uh, sometimes without sugar or you put seeds if you like. I put cranberry and uh, no cranberry, actually, you can put cranberries as well. I put, uh, I put goji berries as well um, in, in the in mixture, and also vegetables. It's just really, really um, flexible and uh, easy to make. So, I'm not adding salt to begin with, just because I don't know how salt is going to it. So I'm just going to be that there, and it takes about, let's say about 20 minutes. While this is cooking, um, I'm going to just fry the courgettes. So, it's one courgette, and I like, so, there's this way of, of frying courgettes, which is basically, if you cut them quite thinly, they're sort of caramelized. You don't want to, you have to make sure not to burn them. But they're almost caramelized and with a bit of olive oil. And if you like it, 
you can add some garlic. I find the garlic and courgettes are just like made for each other. But of course, it's down to individual taste. I'm not going to do it this specific time because I'm taking this to work and I don't want to just to kill all my colleagues with my very garlicky breath. So, um, I'm going to start uh, depending on the size of the project. This one is sort of average. I will probably catch it in half moons. As I said, not too um, thick, it's quite thin. Not to say again, not too thin, because otherwise um, it's going to burn too easily. But if um, the courgettes couge have quite a lot of water content, so if we add, if it's cut too thick, it the water stays in, and so they tend to smash out. And it's quite nice with this one if you can have them slightly crunchy in the salad. The reason I divided the courgette in two is because it's bent. So this way it's a bit more regular. I'll just start with this one. Get it going. If you do it with um, very young baby courgettes, it's, they, they tend to have a buttery kind of texture, which is really wonderful. Um, and courgettes can be especially cold in the summer, which is when courgettes should be eaten. Um, they're the one of the gifts of the summer garden. And, um, so many things you can do with that. Where I come from, um, so my family, we had a garden, and by the end of summer, I have to say, I started to hate projects because we would be every day, every day, we'd be eating projects in a, in a good year. I mean, and of course, you know, yes, there are many things you can do with them. We eat them in different ways, we fill them with meat, we deep fry them. Um, we just cook them with tomato. Uh, it's just like every day we would have courgette in one way or the other. My mother makes just this um, traditional dish, which is um, courgettes deep fried in olive oil together with um, onion and sage. And then they are covered in vinegar. And this was a way, that, the traditional way, to make sure that you, you know, when you have a lot of courgette from the garden, the garden in the summer, um, before the day, the days of um, um, freezes, so the, uh, low temperature, of, uh, the ability of freezing in your own house, they used to uh, try to find all the possible ways to preserve for as much as possible the vegetables that you got on, on a daily basis from the garden. And, and that was one way, so you sort of pickle them. But this is a sort of fresh pickle. It's not quite kimchi, it's, um, and the, it's, it's an interesting combination, the onions and the garden, uh, the deep frying and the onions and the sage, which you find in different parts of Italy, and I think it comes also from probably uh, Spain, might be Arabic as an as origin in the Middle Ages. I think it's a very, very old way of preserving stuff. And it requires quite a lot of vinegar. And if you don't like vinegary, sour things, um, then it's not quite as your thing. But we do that um, traditionally not only with um, courgettes. We, they call them, I'm trying to remember the quote, in the... Um, Yes, I just a meat lamb. Carpione, that's what it's called. It's called carpione, and I don't know what, uh, what it means or why. But um, it's a way in which also fish was preserved. So, especially river fish, 
that um, is not particularly tasty. So people go you know, um, fish down in the, in the um, streams and uh, in the kind of plain area. The kind of fish that you have is like carp, uh, similar, and they're not great in terms of taste. But then you did fry them and put them in vinegar, and then you had proteins. And of course, that was very important that you, you know, you may use or form the resources that you were given. Oh, so we started to get the smell of the courgette almost burning, um, not quite, you know, roasting nicely and frying, and that brings out um, the flavour. So, one has to be careful not to put too much olive oil, otherwise it's going to be too oily, the salad is going to be heavy. On the other hand, a bit of the olive oil is going to be okay because it's basically going to be the dressing for the and when I say salad, it's, it's just a way of, of calling it. It's not necessarily a salad. It, it, it becomes one in the summer, but in winter it's just, you know, kind of like... You, know, it's warm. you can have a warm salad, I guess. Salt on this one. See how quinoa is doing. Well, so not much left to do but wait. And here we are. Um, the quinoa is now beautifully cooked. Um, I'm going to show you. It's nice and fluffy. What I've done, I've actually um, switched off. The, um, oh, after about 18 minutes, when it still wasn't, it still had a bit of uh, liquid in it, uh, and that's somehow just you leave it there, and it's it's um, it fluffs up a bit. And this is why I said like using actually three times the water it just, it just seems um, a bit too much. Although I mean, as I said, I don't wait, so it's probably not quite three times the water. Right, so what always have to do, uh, I also check it with, um, uh, check that the salt is okay. And now I'm just going to get some of that. In the meantime, you can see the courgette also have cooked beautifully. And there we go. It's like caramelized, pretty much. So I'm just going to have some of this, put that together. And we have some green one. I'm going to add some olives. I just already. Um, I can't think of words today. It's one of those days. Um, I've already uh, taken the liquid off. So there you go. Here we go. Some olives. I just. I really can't think of the word. Um, now, if you wait, I've done this in a very, very simple. Because I like to do plain things. And then you can you can add, I really believe in improvisation in the kitchen. Um, so if you like a bit of um, chili sauce in the courgette, that will help. Now I'm just going to add fried courgettes. There we go. And then all we need to do is to mix it. I'm going to make sure that the oil, some of the Oil from the courgette comes in there because this is going to enrich the salad. And then we just need to mix it to make sure that you don't have too much quinoa uh, in comparison to the thing. Then I'm actually going to put a bit of olive oil because there wasn't that much oil in the courgette. There are many ways of enriching this. This is a basic one. As I said, um, you can add feta cheese to it. 
and it's really, really, really nice. And actually, when you warm it up, then the feta sort of like um, melts a bit, and that's a nice effect. Uh, basil, I don't, I because I'm going to warm it up. I'm not going to add basil to this, but if you had it fresh, basil and courgette work. They work beautifully together. So that's another thing you could do. And uh, otherwise, you could add with pesto, so you can dress it with, with pesto. And again, if you put the pesto, then it's there. You can use vegan pesto, of course. Um, so a version without the, the, the cheese in it. But then, if you do it, it works beautifully with the cheese. And to be honest, actually, not just feta. Um, there is this lovely Italian cheese called Scamorza, which is slightly smoked. That one will work. And uh, of course, basil also gives it a bit of freshness. It has basil has that quality, doesn't it? It just makes things feel fresh. There's uh, something like about the scent and the taste of it. Thanks for that. Um, so there we go. It's um, a lovely quinoa project for the salad. Enjoy!